For more videos on people's struggles, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. On April 14th, U.S. President Joe Biden announced that the U.S. along with NATO allies and operational partners will be withdrawing all the remaining troops from Afghanistan before September 11th. This year will be the 20th anniversary of the 9-11 attacks and 20 years of direct U.S. presence in Afghanistan. The withdrawal of all foreign troops was part of a deal signed between the Donald Trump administration and the Taliban last year in February. Though the deal set May 1st, 2021 as the deadline for the withdrawal, the US is most likely to miss it now. The US-Taliban deal signed last year had also imposed certain conditions on the withdrawal of troops from Afghanistan. The two main ones were intra-Afghan talks and non-cooperation of the Taliban with Al-Qaeda and ISIS. However, according to reports, the Biden administration has decided to withdraw the troops anyway. The US, which had more than 100,000 troops in the country in 2011, has gradually reduced it to around 2,500 troops due to the rising cost of the Afghanistan war. Most of the troops were withdrawn during Donald Trump's presidency. While Biden and other NATO countries have announced that they will be withdrawing troops, it does not mean an end to US presence in the country. Reports have stated that the United States military will remain in Afghanistan in the form of special operations and CI personnel, along with manned attack aircrafts, drones, etc. Airstrikes alone have caused a heavy number of casualties and destruction. According to figures released by the US military, US and its allies dropped 81,638 bombs and missiles on Afghanistan between the years 2001 to 2019. Data from 2019 to now has not been made public. Even these figures do not include several categories of airstrikes, meaning the actual numbers are much higher. Moreover, only a fraction of the deaths and damage caused by these strikes is reported in the media. It is estimated, however, that at least 31,000 Afghan civilians have been killed in total in this war, and 360,000 civilians have died due to indirect causes from the war. Withdrawal of ground troops alone cannot signify the end of war in Afghanistan when such possibilities continue to exist. So what did the US achieve in all these years that cost so many lives? The US has failed to realize one of its main goals of destroying the Taliban. It is leaving the country after what is definitely a defeat. The Taliban, in fact, is stronger than it has ever been since 2001. U.S. had also stated that it will defeat drug trade by ending the circulation of opium and heroin from Afghanistan. But in the past five years, Afghanistan accounted for 84% of global opium production. Meanwhile, certain sections are demanding that the U.S. presence in Afghanistan must continue for the sake of the advances made in women's rights, such as education. The truth is, in pre-Taliban Afghanistan, half of university students 40% of the country's doctors, 70% of its teachers, and 30% of its civil servants were women. Today, after 20 years of US occupation, in half of the country's provinces, fewer than 20% of teachers are female. In many provinces, fewer than 10% are females. Only 37% of adolescent girls can read as compared to 66% of boys. Moreover, 54.4% of Afghanistan's population lives below the poverty line. 98.2% of workers earn around $3.10 a day. Over two-thirds of the country's people lack access to clean drinking water and the literacy rate is a dismal 38.2%. The presence of the US has done nothing to help Afghanistan and its people. Now the withdrawal of the foreign troops is happening without any sort of peace process or structure in place for future governance as talks between different parties have failed to reach any conclusion. Mir Rahman Rahmani, Speaker of the Lower House of the Afghan Parliament, has stated that this could mean the possibility of the return of civil war.